Nancy Astor is a fascinating person. She was witty, she was charming, she was intelligent. And she had a tough upbringing, so she, you know, she had to be tough to survive. And she was a very strong character, she was very forceful. She was a wonderful grandmother. Nancy Astor was something of a rebel. She um, didn't always toe the party line. She was elected as a Conservative, but she didn't always vote with the Conservatives. She was not going to have anybody boss her around. And there were a hell of a lot of people who thought she had ideas above her station. She was a woman of great convictions and great persuasiveness. Um, she was such a forceful personality that she got an awful lot done. When she, she managed to marry a very mild Lord Astor, uh, she was able to do all kinds of things that women hadn't been able to do before. They never had the money and the power, and she got both. She's got newspapers and money. After the Parliament Qualification of Women Act was passed, um, women candidates stood in the general election in 1918, and one of them was actually elected. This was Constance Markovitch, um, who was elected for Sinn Féin in Ireland. But because she was a member of Sinn Féin, she never took her seat. She was a kind of you know, hard-working wife of a Member of Parliament, so she knew the constituency pretty well, and they knew her, and that's why they asked her to stand. What drove her was a deep conviction that she had to do something to help other people. Because I wanted the world to get better, and I knew it couldn't get better if it's going to be ruled by men. As a fact, I think it's amazing how well the men did for 2,000 years, considering they tried to do it alone. And Nancy Astor said in her campaign leaflet that what was really important to her was a peace progress and prosperity of the country. She was standing for Plymouth Sutton, which was a port, of course, and she made it quite clear that she wanted to work for the soldiers and the sailors and to their wives and children. And she said explicitly that she thought she knew Plymouth better than any of the other candidates, particularly the women and children and the social problems they faced. My mother had for years been trying to get me to apply to go on Mastermind and I'd never been able to think of a specialised subject. In 1982, I watched a BBC dramatisation of Nancy's life and found it fascinating enough to get me to read a biography of her. I thought, well, here's a great subject. Your name, please. David Beamish. Occupation. House of Lords Clerk. Your chosen specialised subject. The life of Nancy Astor. I think it must have been quite startling in a very male-dominated environment when a, a, a woman was on the floor of the House of Commons for the first time. I research here at Special Collections at the University of Reading in the Nancy Astor papers. We have a huge collection here, it's over 2,000 boxes. Nancy's maiden speech again very much reflected who she was. It was her commitment to Christian science, it was influenced absolutely by her abhorrence to drink. The first bill ever introduced by a female MP was introduced by Nancy and again it was about drink. It was the intoxicating liquor bill, which is one of the reasons why we still have to wait until we're 18 to drink today. There was two parts to her war work. The first was Cliveden, where it was turned into a Canadian hospital. And then, of course, the other part was as MP for Plymouth. Plymouth was very badly bombed. It was blitzed a number of times, and she spent a lot of time there dealing with all the casualties, the homeless, and people who had been bombed out. And that brought her to national prominence, I suppose, in a way that hadn't quite so much before. But she was always well known. The Cliveden Visitors books are an outstanding record of the people that Nancy surrounded herself with. They were people who were politically influential, they were her family, and they were her close friends. You have Amy Johnson here, who was the first woman to fly the Atlantic, Charlie Chaplin, and then of course her really great friend, George Bernard Shaw. I mean, Renette, there's the famous quote of uh, Churchill saying, I, 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 I don't want to have anything to do with that woman, you know. There were, I mean, there were no other women at the time. Nancy was aware from the moment she took her seat in Parliament of her place in history. She was also incredibly supportive of those early female MPs who came immediately after her. Nancy Astor was not specially interested in women's lives because she was 
interest in whatever touched her, if it happened to coincide with women's lives, so be it. If it happened to coincide with men's lives, so be it also. Nancy Astor was elected in 1919 and held her seat continuously till 1945. That's quite an impressive parliamentary career by any standards. She never lost an election in that time. She found her vocation in Parliament. I suppose her real legacy is it doesn't matter really where you come from. If you're determined to do something, you can get there. There was plenty of opportunity for her to do a heck of a lot of good, which men had rather forgotten about.